Hey, hi there, Jeff here uh, with uh, Beauty Scissor Sharpening. Um, I'm asked all the time, can you sharpen a left-handed scissor? Um, and the answer is yes. I actually train myself to sharpen left-handed. So if I have a left-handed scissor, I use my left hand to sharpen it on my machine. Uh, and uh, vice versa for right hand, right hand sharpening. Anyway, I'm taking the uh, dial plate off here and uh, making sure I'm taking out the very fine tiny washers. Uh, those all seem to get uh, misplaced. Uh, so you'll be very, very careful with that. All right, so I'm just gonna bring it on over here and uh, check the angle on the scissor uh, on my machine as well. Um, both of the angles have to be exact for this to, uh, for this to cut. There, there can be, as far as I'm concerned, zero, zero error, room for error here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this in my um, holder and, uh, if you will, the arm of the machine. Um, what you're seeing here is a, um, I call it the sharpening cake. I actually created it um, and I designed it with my father being a mechanical engineer, ex-NASA uh, engineer. Um, we designed this extension of the uh, Hira 2 sharpening machine to speed up uh, sharpening. Um, normally you have to take the plates off the machine one by one, but here um, I developed a, uh, uh, an, an extension of the machine, if you will, that um, allows me to cut my sharpening time um, tremendously, if you will, you know, down. And so here I'm just checking the, um, the uh, burr, if you will, um, in other words, the pads are uh, several different grits and we're ranging from like 400 grit all the way to I think 1500 is what I have on the top and it's very very soft but what it'll do is it'll roll the metal up right um, so very very hair line um, it almost looks like a piece of hair laying along the ride line of, of metal and it's rolled up very very fine bit and so I took a look at it here and I felt like it wasn't even um, a straight enough line and um, I'm now just redoing it nice and softly here. I find a lot of those sharpeners will um, roll the scissor edge. I used to do that as well too, in other words, but um, I find it um, not necessary. You know, as I discussed it with several other engineers that I know that um, there's really no point. Um, uh, it's not like you're putting a lot of pressure on the blade when you're cutting it. So you're just cutting hair, you're like cutting wire or something like that. So. All right, so what I need is... Uh, Changed out the blade here. Now I'm doing the other side, the other blade. And all right, to the next level. Give you the same angle on it and the next level. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and check the burr, see if I pull up, roll up enough metal to give it a clean, fresh edge. That's what we're trying to do here. So I'm expecting a little of my light. The light will bounce off the uh, uh, burr um, differently, and so I can see it. All right, now what I'm gonna do here is I'm taking the blades to the whetstone, I'm gonna uh, pop off that burr also, if you will, but I'm also going to um, smooth out the ride line. Now, as you can see, I'm only going one direction, and then I actually go and lift the blade off the whetstone and put it back down and do one stroke. A lot of other sharpers will back and forth, back and forth. I, I don't, that's not how I choose to do it. I choose to keep the direction of the, of the blade always going in the same direction, not forcing. You know, there's, there's little tiny pieces of metal fibers that um, uh, get, are on top of the water stone and that puts little gaps that I just don't want, do not want to rub the beautiful new blade sharpened blade back over that so by keeping it one direction um oh in some other words it rolls the metal deposits little tiny metal deposits if you will um away from the blade each stroke is going rolling away from the new edge up and on they're not not going against it so 
I'm putting mild pressure on here. You don't have to do too much. Um, I see some scissors that are damaged, if you will, and they have a ride line that has increased. That's because the convex edge inside the air gap, if you will, in the blade, there's an air gap in, in between the blades when they come together. And that air gap allows the hair to fall away. Once cut, it will drop away, kind of like the little air gaps you have maybe on a kitchen knife. You see those little tiny ridges in the knife. Well, that's so that it allows air, if you're cutting tomato, to separate you. <laughs> it don't work. Um, so um, I see that sometimes the ride line is uh, been worn down too much by too much pressure on. And here I am just now buffing. Um, the bottom and on here is a diamond paste. I actually have diamond paste. It's got little tiny pieces of diamonds in it. Tiny, tiny, fine. And dust diamond, if you will. Uh, dust of diamonds. Which polishes the uh, metally rough surface from my sanding on the grit. Right, to bring some. That's it. I just see left handed. Anyway. Again, left handed. Taking my time nice and easy. Probably only about 200, maybe 2,000 RPM. It's really slow. That machine only go up to about 10,000 RPMs. So, <clears throat> but you don't really need much. You know, a lot of the scissors nowadays are fairly soft metal. Um, it's a combination of different things, and um, you have to be very, very careful uh, when sharpening these not to take off too much metal. I'd be very, very delicate with it, and I pride myself on, on that kind of care that I give to my client scissors. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start reassembling the scissor. What I'm pointing out here is that there's um, a dial plate and on the dial plate there's a little bump and on the dial that goes on or the screw you know that goes on the cap um, there's actually uh, teeth like like teeth and, and when you tighten it sometimes you'll hear the click right that means that you you know those ridges of the teeth are going over the bump in the click plate so it goes click it'll click it'll make noises it'll, so now you know that's tightening and tightening up and the click plate actually is um, almost like arched so that it's, it's acting like a spring right so it's not completely pinching the blades together but it actually gives it gives the blades the ability to flex as you uh, cut with them and that's it just cleaning off the blade here I'm gonna move to uh, oiling testing and <laughs> I, I laugh because testing left-handed scissors is very difficult because I actually have to cut left-handed because we all know that you have to apply a certain amount of thumb pressure to the cutting blade. So, you know, putting left-handed scissors in a right-handed uh, in a right hand is very difficult to apply the correct pressure to make the blades work properly. So, what do we do? We go ahead and cut with our left hand, and, and I find it very difficult and awkward, but uh, you know, I, I, I get through it. I know your left-handed stylist is probably laughing right now, and I don't blame you. And I blocked the camera here, didn't realize I was doing that, but uh, here we go. Anyway, they are sharp, and I'm trying to uh, show you, show you, show you. Oh, look, yeah. there's a the tether. There you go. And, I, and when I test cut, too, I actually will cut and actually draw back the scissors toward my body, if you will. This way, the edge of the blade is being dragged over the paper. Right, and if there's a little tiny nick in the blade or some kind of burr, it'll catch the fine fibers of that tissue, which will then tear it well and allow me. So, just by cutting straight through without moving my hand, I don't believe is a really good test. I believe that actually cutting and pulling through, and or um, you know, like um, uh, yeah, anyway, I think. I'm sorry, I was just thinking about I was watching. The, that's I'm just cleaning them up here. And uh, all set, ready for delivery here. That's it, put a little oil on them and we'll be on our way. This is all I test I like them too, make it nice and really damp. This really thin one ply. And we'll go ahead and try to cut through here. Gives me a really good gauge of how sharp it is. Look at it, just slice right through it. Like There we go. Right through the butter. Hot knife and butter. Okay, 
as well as snap at these. I feel comfortable with them. I'm going to hand polish them, if you will, clean them up, and uh, return to the client. Thanks for watching.